Hello and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be GI Basics Part 2. In here we will cover the Global Illumination UI and we continue from the previous Part 1. We will go uh, slider by slider and I will show you exactly what they do and how to best use them. But before we get started with that, I want to show you something that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and turn off all my particles so that we can see this effect much better. I'm going to go in here, go to the beginning of the animation, and I'm going to remove the animations for my particles completely by selecting the particles and say remove animation. And I'm going to remove the animation from that one as well so there are no particles turned on at all. So when I play this back, all right, no particles at all. Great. All right, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead real quick and I'm going to turn off the foreground light here, the street light that's here up the front over here. So I know that land that uh, uh, light st street light is uh, my FG. Oh, that's BG. That's background. We want the FG1, which is this one over here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn that off just to really get the effect that we're looking for so we can see it better. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my camera close up. And let's see if you can figure out what I'm trying to show you here. If you mention the screen being animated, that is exactly correct. Not only can you have <clears throat> a texture that illuminates uh, uh, with the surface, but you can have a movie attached to that surface. So as you play the animation, the lighting is going to change because the frames on the animation change, and you're going to get this wonderful flicker coming from the screen and illuminating the characters. And you can use this for TVs, movie screens. Um, you can even use special effects if you want. You can attach it to a, uh, like a video of fire, attach it to a plane, and then turn on the GI on that and just let it rip. Pretty neat, right? All right, so let's get back to our tutorial and start covering the Global Illumination UI. Let's get to it. So our first parameter is the checkbox, Global Illumination checkbox. This means that we'll turn the Global Illumination overall on or off. If you, if you have this off and you press your render button, it's not gonna have GI on. So it's very important to make sure that when you do your final render, this is checked in. You can also turn it on and off using this icon over here. It does the exact same function. However, this one right next to it is just for the preview window. And it's, this one is a good one to use all the time, especially when you're animating. Notice when I turn this off, we save quite a bit of memory. We are at 6.2 when you turn it off. Now we, when we turn it back on, it jumps up to 7.8. Not only that, when you have it off, GI off on the preview window, your playback is going to be a lot faster when you're animating and you're doing the animation test or whatever you're setting up your scene. So this is something to keep in mind as well. So you don't have, if you don't have to have GI on in the preview window, don't. The next button here is a, a reset button. So if you need to start from scratch because you messed up with uh, the parameters too much and you can't remember where you were at, and you <clears throat> run out of undos, for example, just if you need to start from the defaults, just click this button right here. Our next parameter is ambient light color. And right now it's set to zero, which is the default when you start a brand new scene. 
so is pure black and our next parameter is ambient strength which is related to this however because our uh, para our color here is pure black and it's zero anytime you multiply something by zero you're gonna get zero so no matter how much you move the slider you're gonna get zero changes to your GI however notice that as soon as we start adding a little bit of value and saturation to our uh, color here color palette things actually change so let me change the uh, camera so you can actually see this so we're going to zero and or to one and slowly start increasing that ambient light now this tends to flatten your image so it's not recommended to use it a lot but if you need to do something that's stylized where all your shadow areas are filled with the particular color it is possible to do so with this uh, parameter right here so um a little bit doesn't hurt but you know it is best to keep it at pure black because your your PPR shaders and GI will work out better that way and if you need more fill into those shadows then actually use lights for that it, it is uh, a good practice to do so that way ambient light usually doesn't get touched unless you're doing a stylized look of course all right so our next parameter here is uh, GI anchor now this gadget or widget over here dictates uh, where most of the resolution is going to be for your voxels. So this is you want to place this in areas where you want GI to shine through and you want your best GI solution. Uh, I'll talk about talk about more about voxels in a tutorial, specific uh, tutorial. Uh, check the link below for that if you're interested. Uh, so uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. The next one is our uh, anchor settings, which is basically uh, brings up this menu over here. So if I had, for example, uh, the soldier selected and I wanted my anchor settings to come on, just click on that. And that's for that. All right. Pretty simple. All right. So now we're starting to talk about bounds. We have the diffuse bounds and the specular bounds. Now, Bounce strength is self-evident. Uh, as soon as you start cranking the values up, everything gets a lot. The bounce gets a lot brighter, and also your uh, emit light emitting surfaces. So this is for both uh, when the ray bounces off a surface and when light uh, be is being emitted from an actual surface. Okay. So our next parameter is shadow detail. Now shadow detail. It's a way to uh, darken the areas where the shadow or the occlusion it's uh, being set by the voxels. So it's it kind of has a, a darkening strength strength darkening uh, effect, kind of like a, a the darkening from your light shadows. Uh, the, this this spotlight shadows and or the uh, directional shadow the directional light shadows. Uh, our next setting here is shadow bias. This is if you have any kind of artifacts on the shadows themselves. Uh, this will allow you to clean them up. Now, don't go too crazy with this because you can break the shadows with this. This is just as a touch-up. And I will show you a good example uh, when you could use something like this. Um, on, on When we start touching up uh, the specular ones. So... Uh, just know that this is basically to clean up the shadows where uh, things might look broken. Our next parameter is uh, voxel cones. And this, the way it works is, the more cones you get, and I'm going to show you here the image. What happens is, uh, as you increase the number of cones, and this is per voxel side, okay? So the more accurate the shading is going to be on your characters or your geometry. So what do I mean by that? All right, so let's go to the close-up again. Over here. And let's pick a, a frame where the GI is really shining on his face. Like so. Okay, no, now notice that uh, right now my voxel cones here 
are set to 64, which is the maximum number you can get, right? So let's get this a little bit. The bias was too high here. All right. It, which is the, num the maximum number, as I said. Now, if, we, if I go to the default settings, which is usually 8, look what happens. He looks very washed out. Directionality coming from the screen onto his uh, front gets... Uh, disappears there is no 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 uh, enough resolution not enough cones in there to set the directionality from from the light that's coming from the tablet so in order to get to get this fix you increase the number of cones so as i increase the number of cones the more defined the directionality becomes because the more uh, detail you get from each cone so as i go all the way to 64 you can clearly see that the light is really coming from the front. It's not washing out these areas where it should be in shadow. So that's what voxel, voxel columns are for. The ne next one is the multi-bound scale. So for this one, let's go back to our wide view. And I'm going to go to my daytime scene here. And uh, go to all the way to the beginning of the animation, which is daytime. All right, let's make this invisible, our uh, anchor. So we make that invisible because we don't need to see that. Okay, so I want you to take a close look here at the bottom of this uh, Humvee. And uh, there is a, notice here, there's a little bit of tint under the, uh, the shadow side, under the shadows, inside the shadows, actually. So this is because of the multi-bound scale. As I decrease the multi-bound scale, uh, there is less and less color and now as I increase it notice how you're getting more and more color in there this is because I'm increasing the strength of the rays as they bounce from one surface to another so by increasing the strength of the ray as it bounces it's, tra it's, it's making more color go for each bounce is 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 allowing you to carry more of that reflectance color from each surface that is bouncing from. So a good example here is actually this image right here. Notice here our multi bounce is set to thirty. However, as and notice how uh, 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 gray looks kind of dingy gray looking here is. Now as we increase the uh, the bounce scale, look at how much colorful that is. That's because the directional light ray, as it bounces off the different surfaces, is able to pick up more color uh, from the surfaces that it's bouncing from. So more light reaches in those darker areas. So that's what that's for. So the more, but be careful with this because uh, this could make your scene be blown out. Uh, feel blown out all of a sudden if you move the scale uh, slider too fast. So move it a little bit at a time when you're when you're tweaking this, because wait, move it a little bit and wait a little bit to make sure that the full uh, strength came in. Because if you have a very complicated scene, sometimes there's a little lag behind that. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. So we covered diffuse. So next we're going to cover specular bounds. So let's go ahead, and what I'm going to do here, A, is I'm going to decrease the GI range so we get the most resolution what we're going to be looking at. Okay, so I'm going to decrease the range here to about this point. That's pretty good. All right, because we're going to be looking from this angle over here, basically this area over here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and move that pivot point or that anchor point for the GI range by selecting it and pressing W. I want to make it visible so we can see it. And we're going to move it to the area we're going to be concentrating on, which is about here. So that's pretty good. So that means we're going to get the most resolution out of the voxels in this area, which is what we want. Good. All right, let's turn that off. Next, we're going to push this can forward because it's a pretty nice shiny can here. All right. Like so. Okay. 
and um, this basically specular bounds uh, is related to any surface that is shiny or non-rough and uh, it doesn't matter whether it's metallic or not so let's make sure that we don't see the foot right through the can there okay so let's cover uh, our basics here and before we do that let me just push the reflectivity on this can a little bit because right now it's a bit dull because of the roughness setting i'm going to double right click here and i'm going to take the roughness down so we have mostly a very shiny can here to truly demonstrate and shine off the uh the specular values uh by the specular bounds okay all right so bound strength obviously is all about the reflectivity and how much you gain from uh overall uh, on the image then you have bounce uh highlight detail now this what is what this is going to do is going to start uh focusing on the hottest spot and uh it takes that diffusion go that happens with a, a low uh detail highlight and it just concentrates onto the hottest parts of that uh, uh specular hits on the of the specular hits so notice here is diffuse and it goes more and more concentrated to what the hottest parts are so that's basically what that does next is shadow bias and this is to control how the shading works within uh, the specular uh, reflection now notice here do you see this little grid pattern happening here and notice that as i as i move it back and forth you may see this pattern of uh on the on the reflection itself this is because of the of having a very low bias setting and the way you fix that is simply by increasing a little bit that bias shadow bias value so those see those grid uh that grid pattern is gone so the, all those lines are gone so that's how you fix that so that's what that's for it's basically to control uh, any any uh, anomalies on the shading of the shadows inside the reflection areas and then last but not least uh, we have the noise effect so you will notice here that it just kind of breaks apart that noise for you i mean um, it breaks apart, uh, apart the reflection so uh, a good example here would be let's go ahead and uh, uh, rotate our camera let's let me make sure that it's unlocked right now so let's see camera it's locked right now so let's unlock it i'm going to select the can here so we can get a a, a better angle here so for the reflection so we can see it better all right that's good and i'm going to move the rifle around or the m4 now see the reflection there now if we add some noise to it look how it breaks the shadow see it just makes it more diffuse so it's a stylized choice so your 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 uh shiny or specular objects have a little bit of breakup to it so um this could be useful for some things depending on what you're looking what, what your the main goal of the story is and you really must see that out um that silhouette or not you want that whatever silhouette you see on that reflection you don't want it to be too noticeable so you just break it out a little bit by adding some of that noise in there i believe you can actually crank this up to higher values like so so you can make it like super stylized i guess um so you know it has its uses you might find uh something very cool about this having this on i don't know what the max is but uh look you can put 10 look at that that looks pretty neat actually um so uh again a stylized choice and uh, you have that option if you want it so um this just about covers um gi basics part two and we cover all the parameters so if you have any questions i'll gladly gladly answer them on, in the forum and uh this will conclude our tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will catch you on the next one. Take care and have a good night.